Greetings, friends. <clears throat> Welcome once again to another video on hell, views of the underworld in ancient literature. This is video 2.2 in the Egypt section. What I want to do now is kind of go over some of the theologies that existed in ancient Egypt. So we kind of get a handle on how everything comes together. Because if you look at um, just one piece of literature or two, uh, you find characters in both pieces of the literature, and um, it may be somewhat confusing. Probably one of the older pieces of literature and, and ideas is the idea of Ra passing through the underworld. And this text is known um, as the Book of the Secret Chamber. There's also uh, three of these um, variations. Uh, where Ra passes through the underworld. So, the Book of Secret Chambers is one. Um, the Book of Gates is another. And um, the Book um, Litany of Ra is also interesting. Um, I'm, I'm throwing this in here because Ra, the, the religion or cult of Ra was uh, just as important as the cult of Osiris. And sometimes these city-states had their own um, national deity of the state deity of, of Ra and Osiris and Horus. So, uh, for example, it may be, you may see double names simply it'd be uh, Ra and then possibly the city or where that particular Ra is from. The litany of Ra text is um, the god Ra under 75 different forms. Now we can compare that to today's belief systems where you have the you know the, the uh, uh, especially uh, in Islam you know the hundred names of uh, Allah or uh, I think they have a hundred. Uh, you have the, uh, I think there's um, 75 names of, of Marduk, a little bit older, out of Babylonian culture. And also the names of uh, the Hebrew God. There's, there's a bunch of those. So, all of these, in the Litany of Ra, you see the deity, kind of hints of monotheism in a way, because the deity is manifested throughout in all these other deities. The importance of the Book of Gates is here you have the Bark of Ra going to the underworld fighting darkness through 12 gates or 12 hours of night. Here uh, this trip is, is, is peopled and, and, and with beings and monsters. Um, mainly they believe that uh, you see a serpent down there. I believe the name is Apep. That is slain in this travel through that happened within this 12 hours. Every day. When the sun comes up, Ra comes back with those who were able to uh, climb on board, be, fur be purified. They travel through, come back with Ra in the morning. And this is beautiful. So, in this picture here... Uh, Incidentally, um, I just want to bring this up. Uh, I was able to get this picture uh, when we visited Abu Simbel. Here is Ramses II, and he has made the goal of sitting among the company of the gods. It's a beautiful thing. And um, this is the goal that all these uh, texts tried to get um, the kings and commoners alike to that place where they could sit either with Ra. As, as seen here, or with Osiris. So next we come to the Book of the Dead, which was kind of used by commoners and kings alike. We find them in uh, the, the Valley of the Kings when I went and, and seen some tombs in there. But also in, in funerary texts, uh, they would be found in, in, in coffins, sections of this. So we're going we're gonna to discuss the only... Uh, 
monster being that you find, uh, to my knowledge, in the Book of the Dead, would be the Devourer of the Hearts, which is uh, part hippo, part lion, and part crocodile, as we mentioned in the last video. But other than that, all the scary figures are not there. You, you come before the company of the gods, your, your heart is weighed in the scales, you say the confessions of Matt, which is another piece of literature we'll look at. I have not done this, I have not done that. To the to the uh, confessions of Matt, to the, to the uh, council of the gods, if you will. And then you are presented to Osiris. And, and uh, you're found pure, you take on the name of Osiris, and you live in, with the company of the gods. So, as we get into this, you'll start to see uh, a lot of similarities with more modern uh, belief systems cropping up, uh, especially the, the serpent, and even in the series Harry Potter, um, that that whole chamber of, of uh, secrets, or the secret chamber, and the serpent underneath is very symbolic, and may have been taken right out of this text. So, I'll be posting a link that covers, uh, gives a slight overview of this text. Um, next we'll be getting into the the Papyrus of Ani. Um, we'll be using a translation by both Budge and Faulkner. Um, I was able to get a, a text which actually has um, images of the Papyrus of Ani and with the translation underneath by Faulkner. It's very detailed and laid out beautifully. We'll be covering the um, judgment scene in that and it should be somewhat enjoyable. Also, we'll be after that, we'll be looking at uh, the Book of Gates. We'll be tracking Raj's journey. Uh, we'll be hitting some highlights going through the underworld. And then finally, we'll be looking at some pyramid texts, which are very beautiful. So hang in there. Thanks for coming along. And um, hopefully you're enjoying these videos. And I'll be posting some links uh, to some of this literature that I mentioned in this video. And please take a look at it in the description box. So take care, friends, and remember, if everyone's thinking alike, and somebody isn't thinking.